Hi, I'm Sheldon Dingwall. Welcome to video two in our series on setting up your base. We're going to talk about truss rods and for a lot of people the truss rod is really scary because it's buried in the neck and you don't understand what's going on. Let's try and take some of that scariness out. It's a fact of life that wood necks move with the seasons. So when the weather changes, so will your neck. Now on a really long neck like a base, those changes can be quite dramatic. So it's important to understand how your truss rod works, how to adjust it, uh, because you're going to need to do it almost twice a year. So there are a whole lot of different designs of truss rods. I myself have designed over 12 and I've tested them and some of them worked really well, some of them not so well. The one we're using right now is simple, it's solid and it's very reliable. But essentially, Every truss rod is trying to do the same thing. It's trying to counteract the pull of the strings and balance between that and the amount of curve you need for the style of playing that you're doing. So when the truss rod is in its resting state with no tension on it, it's straight. But as soon as you start to tighten the truss rod, it induces bow, which counteracts the pull of the strings. So string tension is pulling up on the neck, causing it to bow, and the truss rod balances that by pulling the neck in the opposite direction. So when you loosen the truss rod, the strings get higher, tighten the truss rod, the neck goes back. When we're talking action, we're talking string height. And most people think of action specifically with bridge adjustments. But as you've seen, when you adjust the truss rod, it also affects the position of the headstock. The headstock moves up and down, which also affects action. I'm gonna use this rule to represent the strings just for a second here. Now, when you're adjusting at the bridge, most of the change happens in the upper frets. But when you adjust the truss rod, then you start affecting in the lower frets. So it's very important to recognize the difference between the bridge and the truss rod adjustments. So now, if you're trying to chase down buzz, it's important to recognize where the buzz is coming from. If it's in the upper frets, then you'd adjust that with the bridge. If it's in the lower frets, the bridge isn't gonna work. You need to adjust the truss rod. Now, the easiest way to adjust your truss rod is to pick up a couple of capos. You put one on the first fret, and then you put the other one as close to the body as you can. What that does is that creates a straight edge with a string that you can use as a reference, and then you measure the gap over top of the seventh fret. Now, the gap is very tiny. Uh, at our shop, we use a spec of 15 thousandths of an inch, which just happens to be the thickness of a Dunlop pick. It's a nylon, um, 0.38 millimeter. The string is pulled tight. It's capoed at these two fret positions. We can now use that as a reference to measure the gap over top of the seventh fret. And I'm using a 0.38 millimeter Dunlop pick, which is the exact spec we use at the shop. It's a good starting point. Um, if you play with a medium light touch, it'll be perfect. Um, but it's a good starting point and you can either take the truss rod up or down from there. So it should just fit over top of the seventh fret and not push the B string out of the way and not have any gap left over. Truss rod adjustments are very sensitive. So only adjust by one quarter turn at a time and you won't get into trouble. Once you get close to your final adjustment, you can dial that down to let's say an eighth of a turn at a time. Once you get the gap set right, remove the capos and try playing in the lower frets. When you play lightly, the bass should play cleanly but it should start to buzz when you get to about 75% of your maximum attack. Now this is a good thing because it's gonna make your tone sound more aggressive with that little bit of fret grind in there. So is there a perfect truss rod adjustment? No, it's totally dependent on, on your playing style. So if you play lightly, you can have a straighter neck. If you play more aggressively, you're gonna to need to add more curve in the neck to allow for the strings to move. Lastly, you want to make sure you're using the right wrench and that it's not worn out. Truss rod nuts are sometimes replaceable, but sometimes they're not. So you want to make sure that when you put that in, it fits nice and tight. So now that we have the truss rod adjusted for your personal playing style, let's move on to the nut. We'll see you in the next video.